I think what you're saying is correct. There's a lot of different directions to go. In fact, there's a lot to unpack here, right? <laughs> but about this topic. <laughs> so, so I, it's this not like, close it's to not calling like when orders. you're like dating somebody. It's like, any skeletons in the closet? It's like, how many boxes do you have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that. laughs> It's a monstrosity. Mm, <laughs> delicious. Now I know everything that you we, eat. So, so. This is why so many industry awards are complete and utter <laughs> This is why. This is like Yay, J.D. Power and Associates, well, right? Well, yeah, now this now is everyone, why I lose a little more faith in humanity. <laughs> you hate everyone. Every, now, every podcast. Now every, <laughs> is it really a meme, though, if you have to explain it? It's a, well, it's a meme. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Thor loves it. You okay he, over there, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> you want to share for the group? Tell us how Thor feels about it. What is it about packaging that like makes you feel like it was money well spent, whether or not it actually was, right? Like you open this, uh, you you spend an, an ungodly amount of money on a camera system or something, and like. You get it in, you're just like, oh, wow, yeah, I'm going to make so much money with this because, like, the packaging's really nice. Well, I, I should say that. the opposite is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's what's wild about that is, like, uh, so Panasonic, uh, Panasonic, Panasonic's Lumix brand, uh, which is the, the type of camera I use uh, for photography and everything, uh, it comes in and it's just, like, pristine. It's not, it's not like, the highest... Uh, the highest of the high out there but like when they when they package something it's like pristine there's layers the box opens like on a hinge yeah. and then canon comes in which is like the like considerably more expensive on their on their cinema line and it's like Here's a cardboard we box. got this at a yard sale <laughs> <laughs> but we did put it in some cardboard for you yeah. <laughs> so i mean product packaging um is a huge bit of a part when it comes to um impressing the customer long term and almost validating the, their transaction. So if you spent $10,000 like on an item and you get it and look like it was packed with like $5 of the material. Yeah, it's you're probably going to be pissed off. And it's not you're going to start having second thoughts like is this actually worth what I paid for it? Like imagine Rolex not putting the amount of money into their to their packaging, like Rolex boxes, by the way, go yeah. for like seven hundred fifty to a thousand dollars. Yep, empty for real. Yeah, empty. Yeah, mm. for what? For what? What do you do with them? resale value? Like, mm. it has everything to do. Like, when you have a Rolex, every piece that you get down to the like the wax stamp that like it's that wrapped around a piece of string, that adds value to the resale value because mm. uh, it just proves just more ways to authenticate uh, that aspect. But if you spent fifteen thousand dollars on a watch, on a watch like this one, and you it was arrived in a you know plastic bag, would you be happy? <laughs> no, no. It's I, a in fact, Rolex. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Them. I'm thinking about this <laughs> this horrible little cardboard box that's in my attic that my seven thousand dollar camera came in <laughs> versus my versus my two thousand dollar camera, which is like coming in like it's a Rolex. So <laughs> most packaging most products you buy are off the store shelf so how do you sell the person in the aisle to buy your product you don't have a physical salesperson mm -hmm. there so advertising is everything when it comes to that or the, not advertising the the graphic design the text that's used to branding, branding to, to sell that person down to the color the look the shape everything now does apple have to do that because apple doesn't have things you can just pull off the shelf um but they put a ton in research and development into packaging design like to when you open like an apple box it, like, so slow oh that's slow yep yep that yep. has that's a whole it's all about extending i mean you have this dopamine effect of what you purchased and then it's the extension of that into the actual opening of it right and then t you know tinkering with it spending I know, I don't have all, patience. all damn night trying to figure out how the damn thing works right <laughs> uh, but there's that oh. that initial <clears throat> rush right and they're just extending that i don't it, have patience i'm like sitting there shaking like, oh, so <laughs> how do you so you, you have to invest a decent amount of time into development so if you have a product and the same thing could be said with services how do you deliver that said service is it like here's a, a link like for you you can say here's a link to your download <laughs> Your your real estate photos. Here's uh, it's super basic, but is there ways you can package that differently, um, with like a, a more descriptive email, like a yeah. template, and then like here is this if you have any questions. So, 
for example, a past client gave you criticisms, like instead of just sending a link, have some descriptive text. A link above with it. no subject, uh, <laughs> yeah, subject That's your subject line. <laughs> yeah. no, no. That's the <laughs> definition of a Here's phishing a link. email. Hey, check out it the might link be a virus. for blank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get some gold from uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So, uh, well, so and I, I think I think actually I think what you're saying is correct. There's a lot of different directions to go. In fact, there's a lot to unpack here, right? Uh, but, uh, about this topic. <laughs> Dude, so, so I think I think one of the things to consider you like that. Not even dad, man. That was a but, horrible dad. Joke. But but uh, you know you have the look and feel of creating this level of luxury experience when it's a Apple product or Rolex, right? Uh, there's also the element but, of like no, you don't it doesn't even have to be luxury. Like it could be a twenty dollar product. You oh, can totally. have decent packaging. Yeah. So I'll give a pri- like a few examples. So this is the overpriced Apple headphones. They're really nice overpriced it's like five hundred dollars but you know there is the well this one's not as slow um <laughs> <laughs> that fucking failed <laughs> well it's already been open before, yeah it's been right? open multiple yeah. times yeah. but like they have like these inserts to uh, hold uh the foam pads they have like this really cool packaging experience when you rip off like the cellophane it, yeah you peel but it away right? it's like clean crisp and i still have this because it's like man i just spent five hundred dollars this just this didn't justify the cost but um it made me feel better about purchase better inside. Yeah. I think when it comes to Apple less is what? less is more. Then you take, You're right, the minimalism of their yeah. packaging is great. But then yeah. you take a simple product like you know this is like, you know, 15 bucks. Yep. This is well designed. Yeah. Right? This is attractive when this sits on the shelf. Th- how else are you going to sell the person? Obviously someone is buying this because either they like really like John Wick like I do or they just like You're pop, a pop movies. I am not a pop. I just like my brother has movies. literally a whole closet about the size of this, just wall to wall of pop. But then, mm-hmm. you take your average product that you can buy on Amazon. So this is just a, you know, a box that cable. has XLR cables. Yep. Cable matters, and you open it. That's not exciting. You're just gonna toss the shit cables. Away. It's yeah. just cable. So, cables. I mean, it all comes down to what. But yeah. see, now, now I would argue. This could have been you, done differently. Yeah, I would argue it's not about it conveying luxury there. It could be about uh, selling another product, maybe an insert, maybe a resell link, right? Uh, a, a, like if you run out of something, an easy way to reorder, right? Th- there's a lot of different ways you could leverage your packaging beyond review. just branding, right? Like if you buy any product on Amazon, vast majority of the time, uh, some of these Amazon sellers have those inserts yeah. to leave a review on Amazon because Amazon does not allow their sellers to re-market or do an email blast uh, to the people who buy their product. Mm. All that stuff is private. They do not do it. And that's actually a great way to get kicked off of Amazon. Uh, merchant uh, is if you try it, there's ways to get around it. Um, and if they find out, they'll kick you off Amazon. Uh, as far as if you try to like you know get their email contact info, phone numbers, uh, there's ways you can aggregate that data. But <clears throat> anyways, having those inserts can help sell you more product yep but even down to like uh, i went and grabbed the, the scotch whiskey out of your office oh, that poor, that poor <laughs> oh yeah the log of the one um, yeah that poor, that like box. packaging design this is pretty average like I, not much development in my opinion went into to this and look oh it's been drunk some already um oh, yeah. that this uh, your, yeah your buddy uh, gave you this yeah um but if you compare this to like a, a blue label for example um their packaging is like Granted, this is nowhere near yeah. the price of a blue label. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, well that, that's one hundred and thirty, hundred and forty dollars. So it's a uh, hundred bucks yeah. off. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but I would say the cost they put a little bit more in time development into that, and people do keep those boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So well, let's. But right. now you have something that person's keeping that's creating that constant burden awareness, and like, oh wait, I'm empty. I need to get more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I actually like their and now their box isn't that spectacular, but their their label is incredible. Lagavulin's label. And again, it's it's hitting on more of like that upscale. That's like a whole industry on its own, right? Is wine and whiskey labels, right? To to beer. showcase them Even in a way. Beer. Oh yeah. Beer is yeah. a uh, Oh my god. They, uh, here's these microbrews have gotten insane. Okay, you look at the copy written on the back of these cans, right? First of all, the, the artwork's, like, amazing. You look at the copy in the back, ridiculous. and you're ready to, like, run through a wall for this beer, right? It's like, it's like, <laughs> it gets pretty it's, ridiculous like nowadays. it's like the knight was walking along the trail, and the bandits jumped out of the woods, and you're like, oh, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Have you ever looked at uh, Death Water? Yeah. That, oh, uh, Liquid Death? Liquid Death. Or Liquid Death. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. The branding yeah. on that like, has, like, the same kind of style as uh, the breweries, but it's just... Water. I would say, yeah, yeah. yeah I would yeah. say that's the best sparkling right. water uh, on the market. 
The tasting. Really? Hmm. Well, they yeah. sell just regular can water too. Yeah. Um, true. I will say the first like big beer brand to really heavy the microbrew was Arrogant Bastard. Mm. It, yeah. Within the name, that stood out, and they're well known for. What's that like, Stone? For, is that Stone? Yeah, Stone yeah, Stone yeah. Brewery. They were known for having those outdacious, outlandish labels, and it would stick out. When you put that next to a Miller Light and Bud yeah. Light, yeah, that's going to grab your attention. Yeah. Yeah. And now Isn't every, but, but I mean the thing is before. though, no, I get yeah. that. But Miller Light's triple hop brewed, so I mean it's incredible. So I like. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Uh, all right, so what else you got there? So this is another one. Um, this is actually for the packaging for these things. Um, these are like two hundred bucks. <clears throat> uh, I see they took a note from Canon. So when you, oh, no, 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 <laughs> it's a box in a box. No, no. Yeah. It says share your unboxing. So like getting the person to share. Nice. This is just nice. the shipping box. And then you get to the, the box itself. Nice. Um, and they protected the box with you know styrofoam around it too. So it's like, they oh. make it an experience. But this was also an experience. Like this is not cheap. This is probably their cost to make this was probably like, fifteen bucks or so. Their cost. Um, and this is like a this is a rigid um, cardboard box, and it, it's nice. Yeah, and you yeah. got the quality. You got um, the UV spot printing, and then they do have an insert in here. Thank you, um, and then a link to. Uh, you leave a review. Oh, it's dense. Yeah, and it, it feels heavy too. Yeah. Nice. I guess I guess what's going through your head is like, uh, you take. I think I think it makes you take a product more seriously. So. <clears throat> True, yeah. but in, in, in the end of the day, um, people will judge you on it. How do you deliver your product and service? So how, what's the way to package? So you have to take it. Mm. Don't just send it to someone uh, or like send <laughs> a link. Um, have some more descriptive text. I'm not picking on you at all, Aaron. No, I'm not picking on you at all. Um, Look, I just want to be like Canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Granted, it, it, it comes down to like some people, you know, do that yeah, obviously for a speed aspect and they think the client's just gonna be happy and yeah the client may be happy with that but um they're well, not they're not gonna rave about you yeah um, yeah and, and it's it, just one less thing that's not gonna help you and i think there's a degree of like when you think about product packaging right i mean that's what they're buying they're buying a physical thing which means the physical element of the packaging is so much more important than a service or something else that else that's being delivered to people um, and, and, you know, again, there are probably ways to package services in a more interesting and unique way. That would be right? your onboarding process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> how how yeah. seamless and easy it is. is like, oh, we just signed up for these services and you have this whole thing laid out and it's just like, oh, well, that's easy. Is that the give when, when we do whatever? Yeah. Yeah. When we yeah. do brand, got uh, brand design, like a there full logo. Yeah. The logo pack that they get, they get a yeah. booklet. Um, yeah. they, if they want to print it out, they can, but yeah. they get an item essentially a book a digital book that so shows them everything yeah, okay. in, a, in a versus very sleek way versus yeah. send them an email and here's every file or a dropbox link yeah oh uh, yep uh here's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> poor, poor Aaron. oh we used to do that so we yeah. used to do the well booklet. i mean we still we still deliver a dropbox folder yeah, we do. of all of their files right but, but the way it's packaged <laughs> in a more interesting way and pleasing to it's the laying eye out the important. expectations sure. of your service Ahead well, of time, or yeah. when we Versus do like putting out fires, going, "Hey, this is what we need to do like now, so we can post stuff to Facebook or LinkedIn like tomorrow." Like mm -hmm. you have it all set up originally, and it's all seamless. Or it's when easy. we do website design, yeah. we don't just send them a link, yeah. and here you go. We actually yeah. <laughs> have a meeting, yeah. and we have a walkthrough, and here's right. your website. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the process. So, um, don't just send someone something and then. I, and then I, I, I want to see what you have to say about this over here because this is the black magic. Um, I wasn't at all impressed with this. Granted, um, <coughs> you know, I mean, the camera price for what you get, and you can speak to this, is actually really good. They didn't really put much effort or emphasis into packaging design because all it is is just a foam insert, and then they had some uh, inserts inside, and then it was the camera. That's it, pretty standard it, for cameras. I know it, yeah. it just wasn't. It like wasn't comparing exciting. Comparing the rest, that product to the, or the that product, that box to the com the rest of them, it has a bunch of pictures on it. Yeah, I mean the sense. imagery. The, like the imagery. Some of the imagery is like pretty selling, nice there. What's the like, like? How to hold it? What's all the stuff on there? Yeah. What? What? How? How are most cameras? I mean, I, I have to imagine at this point, right? 
a vast majority of people buying cameras are buying them online, right? I mean, I don't, I know there's almost some everyone. niche, almost yeah, I mean, everyone. there's some niche, like, you know, small camera shops and stuff that are still Rich, around, Was right? it Richmond but, Camera on, uh, yeah, down in, Cary, Cary well, it's, County. it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty rough to, I don't know. There are, there are some purists who are like, you need to buy your camera from a camera store, but it's a pre- it's pretty rough. Like the the markup the markup in those stores, it yeah. just like it it hardly makes sense. And you're like, oh well, I'll get service. Well, no, B and H does amazing for its people. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, yeah, the B and H has been amazing, and they're an actual store in New York, in New so York. you can you can go yeah. there. It's like the mecca of cameras, uh, camera stores. But yeah, almost everyone's buying it because it doesn't take very long for you to. Like very long for you to be getting into cameras for you to like have like a niche camera that you need I, or a niche yeah. camera that you're looking for. For B&H photo, have you seen how they move products around the store? Yeah, with pretty the, cool. The, the things on the ceiling, the, like the yeah, the racks. Um, actually, Aaron, could you pick up YouTube? Um, this is actually really cool how they move stuff in tight spaces. Um, go to YouTube and type in um, B&H photo. Oh, hey, a website. I mean, uh, last podcast. B H Photo New York Superstore. Uh, uh, scroll down. <laughs> Just do one of the tour videos, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> click to do this guy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they have like these um rail systems up uh, all the way throughout the store it's skipping so when it. something it, that's in stock in the inventory um versus someone physically going to back to get it yeah someone back puts it's like a it, vending machine feel and it just slides down the rack and yeah. it comes all yeah. the way down to the front it's pretty cool um it, but yeah this is where nerds like aaron go and geek out well you know no, what? i can not want to go there lose all my money. it's cool yeah. it looks cool yeah it's where you would go you know i find interesting like when i look at that uh, the uh, specifically the black magic, it just screams to wow. me of a um, uh, a retail environment box, right? right? Like yeah. that you're trying to show all the features on this box because somebody is physically taking it out and looking at it, right? Uh, mm. So it says to me, shouldn't they have for like uh, internet sales a different box, right? You already know all the features. That's why mm-hmm. you spent all the money on this. Right? You don't need to look at it and say, oh, it can do this too. Oh, I didn't well, realize. Well, yeah, there are, there are, there are, uh, that is, uh, that's kind of the experience with the Panasonic uh, uh, line. They, mm-hmm. they do really, really well with their packaging and it's more like that. There's no features listed. It's just a sleek experience. Yeah. Now, it's, the, it's what Apple does. It's- Black Magic is, is a unique company. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they are a company who, uh, what can I say? They they practice in the dark arts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Black magic. <laughs> Black magic. One Black one could say. Uh, no, they they are a company kind of like kind of like Sony, who will put features in and will feature dump into a camera rather than trickle releasing like Canon, Nikon, mm. and Sony. Ha- Sony lately kind has kind of done that, but they are they are a company who will not trickle release technology. They were like, all right, it's available. It's in the camera, like, and so, and then they, then they, they manufacture the camera pretty cheaply most of the time. Yeah. But you're getting cameras that punch way above their, their price point. So it's like, they're, there's in some aspects, they're like a little, not risky. Uh, they just have a lot of flaws. So, so it's like, um, um, their Ursa G2 is, is like one of the best cameras in my opinion that you could get especially for the money uh it's got uh, a compressed raw it's got a uh, it's got high frame rates it's just like a phenomenal camera but and so to get and that's that costs around five thousand dollars now they've dropped to like five thousand dollars um but to get a camera that is like that punches at that weight at uh from canon or uh any of the other brands you're spending ten thousand dollars uh, but G2 has like some weird quirks. Like it doesn't go above like uh 3,200 ISO and it sucks in low light and there's connection problems and it just, so just, <clears throat> uh, wash, rinse and repeat through all their cameras. There's, well, and, and that's interesting. This has a 45 me. minute battery life. Oh like my that's, gosh. that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting to me because it says that that is, that they kind of like put everything they can into one model, right? Mm-hmm. And then what do they? How often do they release? Every couple of years? Is that 
every time that like they release so much. Well, and so that says to me that you know maybe they just don't even they haven't allocated allocated the resources to have different product designs mm-hmm. for different types of experiences, right? Because they're kind of just so focused on just pumping them out, right, and getting yeah. in front. Yeah, I see. People. Packaging design is not that expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. You hire you have which I know they have it because they have industrial designers. Yeah. Yeah. Design you a box. Yeah. That fits around your camera, and then you just have the manufacturer come up with a plan to produce it. Yeah. Packaging's not that expensive, especially at the volume that they're building. So that box probably costs them under five dollars at the hmm. volume they're probably doing to produce. Uh and it's not rigid, so it it, it folds flat. Uh, no, sorry, it doesn't fold flat because it has the styrofoam. Um so that's gonna be shipped that way. Um more than likely though, these were shipped from uh wherever they're made, which is probably China. Uh, mm-hmm. package it's actually cheaper than trying to order packaging from one supplier and then order your product from another and ship it to you then you package it it makes sense just to have it all done there and then ship to you uh it's more steps but cheaper time but savings time savings. you're not you're not paying someone here 15 dollars an hour to package your stuff you're paying some in china to pay whatever the heck they pennies pay on the <coughs> pennies, pennies on, on the dollar. dollar yeah well and yeah. and i get i get in this case if they're pumping out merchandise right i understand why they would basically have one box and then change the photos and change the features right because yeah. now you're just changing the print because yeah, they don't right? they they're, don't seem to be they also don't seem to be very flagship focused right okay so uh sony uh uh canon nikon they're very flagship uh focused like they have uh a camera for a very specific shooter and that's the camera they don't have like three iterations three or four iterations okay. of that camera uh well i guess they do have s- some iterations but they they're very like if you're a video shooter for uh with sony you're like a 7s line if you or or, or fx3 line or what the fx line if you're uh photographer only it's like the a7r then there's the a7 that's like the hybrid that kind of bounces between them yeah well yeah. but they A- uh apple is really good at getting it's more of like a ladder approach mm-hmm. so you can buy an ipad like a really cheap ipad from them for like 200 bucks yep i have one yeah <laughs> but then <laughs> when problem. you're on the website it's like oh for 16 more gigs of memory it's only this yeah and then you click that and then like oh wait there's this one you can get this much more whatever or better resolution screen. It's only another 150, and you get that. And then when you're at the max of that iPad, oh, there's the iPad Pro. Sorry, no, iPad Air. And then you go through the whole same process again. Oh, just for another 16 more gigs of memory, uh, it'll cost this much. And then after that iPad Air, now you're at the iPad Pro. And next thing you know, you're at, you know, oh, Fifteen hundred dollars for a damn iPad when you're at two hundred dollars. To it's but just to their credit, <coughs> to their credit, the unboxing experiences for all of those are, are very same. similar, all right? And so there, it is a high class experience to open an iPad box. Yeah, the right? the watches down to the simple basic like cables, um, are well designed. And um, we're and we're not saying anything that people wouldn't expect, right? Because I mean, this is a, a company that's valuation is like top ten in the world, right? So I mean, they I say, pretty pretty damn well should have some good it, packaging. Right? It's up, Truly. it's up there. Yeah. Um, but again, you look at Microsoft products that sometimes they're not that great. Yeah. Packaging, this is basic, and they're multi billion dollar. That's true. You know, conglomerate. That's true. Yeah. So it's just yeah. it comes down to who's the decision maker in the end. Well, and it's who's funny trying because to, trying to reduce costs. Yeah, and it's Some, funny because be it there, they, Microsoft has that B two B like focus, right? Which means that they cut corners, right? Because <laughs> they don't care about the individual experience of opening. It's like, you know, some some IT guy downstairs is going to be opening this, so who cares if they don't like <laughs> the unboxing experience? <laughs> it's like... Let them deal with it. Yeah, or, like some people in this room, I don't keep boxes forever. <laughs> I don't keep all the boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a whole closet full of them. Right? Yeah, they're all <laughs> products that we can resell. It's, it's not like close it's to not calling like when you're orders. like dating somebody. It's like any skeletons in the closet. It's like how many boxes do you have? <laughs> <laughs> <All of them. laughs> hey, pull out the Lux box. Uh, this podcast brought to you by Lux Metal Card. If we say that, I have to actually market as sponsored by. <laughs> um, oh, this is the this is the is uh, thank yeah, you card one. Thank you cards. Yeah. yeah, we do a hard foam insert yep um when someone's buying this they're spending at least 500 to 600 dollars for what goes into this um and it's a metal card so it's gonna be heavy so we need it to stay protected and in place so it's not flinging around everywhere the hard foam also gives it a nice like oh this is custom cut out and 
made just for this. The rigid box also helps, and then the magnetic, you know, close. Mm -hmm. And then this is the, um, this is called silver foil. Um, and then uh, this simple is just a print. Now, we did just switch our box uh, to the updated logo color, where mm -hmm. it's going to be yellow and blue. Nice. But I'm doing UV print, so it has that nice reflective. Nice. Um, nice. And then I got a <laughs> box similar to this, where it's going to reduce our packaging time. I so I was doing like your typical, you know, box like that where you have to fold, uh, you know, moving boxes, fold it, tape it, and all that. These are a lot more like your pizza box type. Yeah. Of, a lot easier to fold. Pop it in there. And, and boop, boop, done. in the end, it, the box is going to, this box is going to fit in that box perfectly. Right. So I don't have to use foam. Yep. So cost material goes down. Um, time, time speed goes, down. goes uh, yep. down. Speed also, goes up. I have to use less materials. Now there's only one point of contact for this box to open. I only have to put tape on one side yeah. versus having to do tape here, you know, two times on the top and then on the bottom and then on the side. Since it's all enclosed, um, it makes it more, more, much more efficient. So I've reduced packaging time. I remember when we first started doing packaging for Lux, it would take us like an to hour, ship over three hour. orders. It would take us yeah. like an hour. Yeah. Um, then we got the water activated tape, which is what this brown tape is or what you see on Amazon boxes. You hit a button and it shoots out tape in the size that you want, and you just stick it. You don't have to. Uh, it, it just works better than your regular um, masking tape or packing tape. Um, so that reduced time. Uh, this type of box reduced time. Um, so it's all and about. It's also not just a box. Now, it's a value add for the customer true. because it card it looks sexy. Yeah, it's, it's a card, card holder. holder. And, well, and they uh, and and the feeling, right? Do we are we still gonna have the branding statement in the top there? Yeah, right. So um, and actually, we did yeah. just change it. So this is moving to the side, yeah. And then we're putting a business card insert. So we'll put yeah. one card here. Yeah. So versus having them open up the whole thing, they can pull one card up and they can see yeah. their cool card. That's yeah, super it cool. adds maybe five more seconds to our packaging um, time, but it just it's that value add. But I've already taken off. 30 so minutes much. So <laughs> much. So um, much. off our packaging time. So it, it takes us maybe the uh, packing is maybe less than five minutes. Uh, what takes longer is actually doing the order flow on the website. And printing the, printing the label. The fulfillment, yeah. the fulfillment yeah. side of things. Yeah. Um, well, and and I, th th I think the label biggest takeaway that people should have from what you're saying, Ryan, is the constant focus on improvement, right? Because your packaging is never perfect. But it could always get better, and there are, there are always small yeah, ways you can what? iterate. It's doing multiple things for you at once. That's like yeah. how many iterations? That's like the, our tenth box iteration. Yeah, like, like it, it. But it's all about. It's all been because we're trying to impress the client. You just yeah. spent a thousand dollars on business cards, like right. to justify that. Like I just spent five hundred dollars on a pair of headphones. Yeah, you know it's, it helps justify that cost, and then you can show it off. Right. Um, but then it also reduced our packing time. Which saves us time, money, yep. stress, just being annoyed, um, sitting there packing, <laughs> you know, doing a fifteen boxes. You know, it's worth fifteen bucks an hour or whatever, yeah. or if that. So, yeah. um, it's not just the marketing side, but it's also from an operational standpoint. Yeah, got to take that into consideration. So, uh, and it's made our process speed a lot faster, and so it's way less messy too. We haven't really talked about so far is um, where to start, who to talk to. Like the whole process of getting a box and then working on improvement. Like what from your? You gotta have a product first. <laughs> so we have a product. Cool. We have. So if you're like running an e-commerce business right. and right. you're a solo opener, or maybe you have a couple people that work for you, right? What do you do? If you're looking for ideas, Pinterest is for packaging design. Pinterest is the place to go. Oh yeah. Not Google Images, yep. but like Pinterest, and you type in packaging design or packaging ideas. Plethora of like different concepts and. Design. There's a lot of people who design packaging who just make concepts of just boxes for random things, uh, and there's some really cool stuff. And that's where I get some of the inspiration of how we should package something. Um, then it comes down to you need a designer that knows how to design packaging because it's not like just a flat 2D because the designer has to design for the actual full-on flat version cutout of what it's going to be. And then you send that to the manufacturer because if you just send someone like a you know an 8 by 12 yeah this is my packaging and it's just a lot of square corners then how do you how do you determine it's, a, it's a not good gonna manufacturer be, versus a bad manufacturer I'll get to that yeah um so once you have the design and the way you can find a designer 
Uh, you just type in packaging design. There's plenty of companies. There's companies that are going to charge you out the ass, you know, for packaging design. It just depends on who you want. But you can find packaging designers on Fiverr. Now that you're paying more than five bucks, you're probably paying like 25, 50 bucks. And then you can get an experienced packaging designer to design you a cool package. Uh, then to find a supplier to make your product. So Alibaba, you, again, you can refer to our previous uh, episode we talked about how to source product from China. It's the same way. Right. It's just this is the product you're buying. Um, you just got to go through the whole process of vetting, and you can go watch that hour-long podcast on, on that. And, and there's Somewhere back and here. forth because yeah. you, you, you need to get production samples, right? And you need to be very specific with every detail, right? It, down to, you know, millimeters, right? Yeah, this millimeter sizing is everything because yeah, if yes. you get, you spend all and money and then your product doesn't fit. So you also, you always want to do a sample first um, when you're changing sizing and stuff um, because that's a very costly mistake. So yeah. like we just got, so I, I'll give you an example. We just bought all new packaging because we're, we're running out for Lux. Uh, I got a hundred of these boxes of the large one. And then a uh, hundred of the small one, and then packaging boxes as well. So I got fifty packaging boxes that hold two of these, a hundred that hold a single of these, and then a hundred that hold the small ones. With shipping and everything, do you know how much we spent? How much? Four grand. Just in shipping. Yeah. Well, yeah. four grand was for, uh, fourteen hundred was for shipping, <coughs> wow. but um, or I could wait. You know three months for mm-hmm. it to go through, you know, see for right. it was only 400 bucks, right. but, um, we kind of need the stuff. So yeah. I yeah. paid an extra thousand dollars. You just the cards in bags. Don't worry about it. The clinic. So, it. but then you figure out where your cost is, but I, I bought like, you know, 400 some odd boxes technically. Yeah. Um, so our cost per box, I think it's around 15, just under 15 to $16, but which is not terrible for the value of what they're buying. They're not buying a $20 product and I spent 15 bucks on package. So that's not right. anything you got to take in consideration. Um, and then volume is one, but the person with this product, they're spending at a minimum five for this box. At least you're spending a minimum of 500 bucks to a thousand. What's $15 Oh yeah, uh, yeah. to impress 10%. your client that they're going to take a picture of and show it. you know, it's just, it's an impressive factor. Yeah. So, and even having a shot at potentially getting a review or a shot at just a better experience for the customer or a shot at reordering, right? And if it's QR codes to link to a reorder page, if it's something that's consumable or they're going to order over and over again, uh, or opportunities for upsells with flyers and inserts, right? Yeah, I just ordered um, it's the, the farmer's dog. I'm trying it out. It's um, that or not orga- it's not organic, but... Um, it's pre-made dog food that's actually like whole food, not mm. just like the mm. kibbles. And it's from a health reason standpoint for your pet. It's far more expensive. Um, I think it's like I a, wonder why. Yeah, well, uh, they, yeah, they they are loving millennials but right now. The pack <laughs> they'll spend anything. Well, on it's their for pack. the health of your, your dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally, it, totally. Like, totally. Does your, like, well, you well they it, talk about how many times millennials have killed whole industries, and this is an example of an entire industry that's grown up because of millennials. Right. Um, so, but when you think about it, like if you have a dog and you just have you know brown kibbles usually dogs aren't that excited to eat you know you're sometimes. supposed to mix it with water um is that right really? yeah, yeah you're supposed so they to don't mix dehydrate your... it's like but yeah, it well it's crunchy right mm-hmm. it's actually bad for their teeth and it actually helps them digest it better so you actually uh, mix a a cup of food with a half a cup of water and you let it sit so it gets moist mm. you're not supposed to just feed them hard kibbles um <laughs> really Aaron? with with this um, the farmer's dog, the packaging, the experience, like the leave review, the whole packets, um, was pretty cool. And, uh, Thor loves it. You okay he, over there, buddy? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> you want to sure? share for the group? <laughs> Tell us how Thor feels about it. He fucking loves it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how I know? Because he, like, whines because when it's uh, food time. He doesn't ever usually do that. Mm. Um. He like bothers me until I, I feed him. Mm. So, yeah. um, like he bolts at the food. <laughs> and so, when he and used have you seen the packaging yet for this? Yeah, I like got it's it. Coming? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just don't know if I want to keep spending one hundred and twenty-five dollars every two weeks. And he eats, he eats oh my than, gosh! He eats yeah, better it's than like most Hello Fresh the dog. <laughs> so yeah, it's like Hello <laughs> Fresh. He eats better than I do. <laughs> So right over here eating chicken tenders and <laughs> rice for dinner. I'm I was just curious on portion size because I'm just gonna make his food and 
that on my own and just do it in bulk and then freeze it. And, and then it'd be uh, like, uh, uh, what's what was that Will Smith movie with uh, him and the dog? I am, I legend. am legend. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, he, yeah. eat your vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Sit out, eat your vegetables, dog. <laughs> if it comes out of my hand, my dog will eat it. That's like, most, I, most dogs. Yeah. He thinks it's a treat. If I grab his food or just put his food on the ground, like the old food, he won't eat it. But if I pick one up and then hand it to him, he'll eat it. He's like, dog. Because <laughs> he thinks treat? it's a human dog? food. So, I'm a dog. Oh, this, this tastes so better. It, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of different directions that somebody could go with great packaging, right? From promoting what's inside, it's, if it's in a, did in you a know retail to, space. It's something to, you shouldn't skimp over. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this: Did you uh, did you notice a difference when you improved your packaging? Oh yeah, it, with um, with clients, with cus- well, with this, with customers, absolutely. Really? Yeah. And what? Wait, what? How was the? What? People actually put it in the review of the, or when they send back, like the packaging. People mention it. Yeah. Like oh, the wow. packaging was great because our competitors just put it in a cardboard box, mm. and that's how you get it. So I'm willing to spend a little bit more for that. For them to come to come back because this is a this is a technically this is a consumable product technically you're not physically eating it but you're giving it out so you are running mm-hmm. out of them and then you're buying more, um, but people when they talk about it they usually always talk about the packaging too mm. and the fact that somebody might actually keep the box like in their office or in their house and not throw it away and I want, like, that's because that right there is staying top of mind the right? cards I are mean, just in plastic bags it's like yeah. if they like you put it down the wrong way all your cards go all over the place so it's yeah. like it's a card holder right? yeah so it there makes you sense. go yeah. how much does one of those weigh with with metal cards in it depends on how many oh, man. um so with this is 250 this holds 50 thank you cards. 50 well this is the thank you cards but yeah. our business card one has five slots and each slot is 50 cards when that's full that's about 10 pounds for just 250 yeah and then yeah. you put two the two is the max we'll ship them one box so shipping a 20 pound box but it's usually it's a small box and you think oh it's light yeah. no it's heavy it always throws yeah. it's always people. great it's when like, the like dhl people a, come in it's like yeah, we have small one right arrived. and it's like a lead brick right <laughs> like, what the hell is like in this well up that up lead brick costs 400 dollars yeah. yeah. you know overseas um like fancy so yes steel. people do judge you on this stuff yeah so yeah i think it was it um authenticity is the last one well the first thing we talked about was authenticity mm-hmm. you know like yeah like um, with the rolex rolex yeah and keeping it authenticity uh, you got you got credibility right yeah, but you have that it prolonging the experience you have the desire for people to want so to share the experience restaurants think about that like if you yeah. just had a chef mm, that just threw shit onto a, a plate and yeah. like, here you go like cafeteria food yeah you will judge that restaurant hardcore. Like, uh, I'm not coming. Hey, Golden Corral. That's terrible. Well, you're the one. You're the, <laughs> the one. To, nope. I'm good. No. Thanks. <laughs> nope. Never, ever in my life again will I ever go to a Golden Corral. A Golden care. Trough. <laughs> 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 That's a great. Um, but yeah, if restaurants, like, if you think about, like, the super luxury type, you know, five, what's it? What's the highest Michelin? Five star. Is it five Michelin? No, three Michelin. No, three, three Michelin. Three Michelin. Three, yeah. No, it's five. yeah. Well, there's five. There's five diamond or whatever. Oh. There's um, five star restaurants, but then there's, there's uh, the Michelin. Michelin stars. And I think you only get three. Three is the highest. Hmm. Yeah, there's one, two. And, I mean, you get one. You're well, still, and you can lose them. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can, you can lose. Yeah. Um. So when it comes to like, That's if you go three. to a Michelin restaurant and you look at the plate, um, it's all like there's like four bites of food it's on the all thing. All about presentation. But they, yeah present that is their packaging but you know so a that, lot of times when people see gourmet food and they're like oh i'm not spending that much for that that little amount of food that's one of like 20 dishes they're they're, yeah. they're passing right they're oh yeah because you're talking you. about in many cases like a a, a tasting menu right a, like a an entire you know, nine eight, course, eight course meal, yeah. you know right yeah so do you know why this is a thing michelin no no why is a tire company the creme de la creme when it comes to restaurant review is it actually? I thought it was. I don't think no, they're connected. No, connected. it is hundred percent. Really? The reason huh. why is back in the day, people were eating more at home, and people weren't driving as much. So what Michelin did is they came up with a way to do reviews on restaurants to get people to drive further away, which means you'd wear down your tire more, which means you'd is buy that more. True? Time. Yes, it is. Hundred percent. Mi- Michelin. Uh, go to Michelin. The wiki. I, yeah, let's, Michelin let's, stars let's do some due is one hundred percent about. The Michelin, History, yeah. 
1990, Three, there were fewer yeah, than yeah, 2,000 you're right. cars on the road in France. A tire wow. company now dictates as far as the wow. exclusivity when it comes to. This sure. is this is why so many industry awards are complete and utter. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> this is like Yay, JD Power and Associates, well, right? Well, yeah, now this now is everyone, why I lose a little more faith in humanity. <laughs> <laughs> you hate every, every, now, every podcast. Now everyone has uh, a Michelin star, like right. maybe back in the day. It's a lot different now. It's like creme de la creme. Yelp star. Yeah, <laughs> I would avoid Yelp <laughs> Star. I would probably avoid you. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's because to get people to drive more, you would drive out Jeez, further do we have any to the country, which restaurants? means you wear no. I don't think so. <laughs> There's no. There may is there maybe one in DC? Maybe, maybe? there uh, would be. Yeah, probably. I would think there would be one DC. But as far as in like yeah, let's look it up. DC the Mission Star restaurants. Uh, <sighs> here we go. Here we go. Jaunt. Jaunt. Oh, French. The ten best Michelin star restaurants. Oh. Hmm. There are a type in Michelin star there's three restaurants two, in Virginia. There's three two uh yeah, two see stars. If there's any Virginia. See if there's any Virginia. Jaunt, Mini Bar, Which and probably, Pineapple and Pearl. Nova or Nova. Uh yeah, hit that. It's, go to Michelin's website, yeah. Yeah. Sibley's barbecue. Just kidding. By the way, does <laughs> That's this a small uh, crappy barbecue does restaurant? Does this check Chester. the box as our um our Every week podcast a distraction moment yes, where we just go on totally. a tangent. This distracting like, totally. <laughs> but it's, it's a tangent where you guys know I'm you're about full it. Of shit. There's no way that's the mission well, stuff. Well, I'm glad we d- <laughs> I'm no glad results. we fact checked <sighs> in case Always, it was fake yeah. news and we're putting not, fake news out in the world. I appreciate that we did that. It's and, a uh, it's a weird piece of info. Uh, like just wait, hip, yeah, hit Virginia. A tire company. Virginia. I wonder if there's any in Virginia Beach. Huh. All right, Michelin, you need a website. Oh, one, four. Ooh. We've got four restaurants. Italy. Uh, no. Yeah. No, no, never mind. Type in, it it came up with Virginia Beach when you, we were typing in there. Interesting. There you go, Virginia Beach. Or Charleston, oh. Chesapeake. Uh, no. no. All right, do not. Richmond. I wonder what the There's closest none. that we have. To it's like it, a it's, it's, it's going to be D.C. I like, no, yeah. I'm going to say I, in Richmond, Virginia, what's yeah. the closest no. high oh, status to, uh, restaurant yeah. that we would have that would compare? I've never been to Fleming's. Fleming's really? If, if if you want to bring down to a cost standpoint, uh, Fleming's or um, DC, Fleming's <laughs> is really like that's I would say uh, from a, a a cost standpoint, like you're spending sixty five dollars on a fillet. Meh. Oh my god, though it is. Meh. Oh, Fleming's oh. is overrated. No, it's not. It, yeah, it's overrated. It's really good. Really good. When we went, I was I was most surprised by their appetizers though. That was better than the steak. But they. Present it's our about, stuff. It's, yeah, it's all about, about presentation. So yeah. uh, wait, did we go there with Anthony and you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it changes from how much food you're getting to how good it tastes and looks and feels and smells and like it's yeah, all it's gonna presentation. Be yeah, it's that. Oh. So, but right again, presentation is essentially in this industry. That's your pr- that's your packaging. Right. Um, people are going to consume your said packaging. Um, so yeah, it's and something you should it, it, versus you know the the golden trough um, that Aaron <sighs> talked about. Well, and I think what's most interesting about packaging is, as you're describing it anyways, Ryan, is the fact that it is a relatively low-hanging fruit to potentially, for a small investment of time and money, to potentially exceed expectations, right? I mean, it is like icing on the cake. It's not, I mean, the 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 cake, cake itself, right, is the product, right? Clothing. But, Clothing the same thing. Yeah, if it's packaged right. the right way, I mean, it can it like, can do a lot. Go to Kohl's, which I'm sure all you guys have been there, and you look at like Hanes shirts are just rolled up in a plastic bag, and then the same pot, even the same pot, same level of quality. Um, Calvin Klein, it's not that high quality, but it's in a cardboard box and it's a little bit more sleeker and nicer. The Hanes stuff is like 15 bucks. Calvin Klein, it's 45, and you can almost justify that. I don't justify it, but you can almost justify that cost because. The packaging looks sleeker, nicer, um, yeah. and people buy it. Yeah. It's um, uh, someone said something about clothing one time that uh, that resonated with me. They said that um, it's the ability to uh, speak without words. Yep, that's that is. If you were to sum up this whole podcast as far as what packaging design is, is that? Yeah, mm. you're, you're, you're 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 it's it's expression without without words because you're. You're saying this is the kind of person that buys this. This is the kind of uh, if if this 
uh, this packaging resonates with you. This is the kind of person you are. It's like, you know, it's people, people making purchases based on emotion and like self identification. Yeah. It's like, uh, Simon Sinek talks about no one, no one covers up the Apple logo on a MacBook because you want people to know it's a MacBook. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we do we it. And we do it in video because of trademark issues. Yeah. But yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so very good. Um, I don't have anything that wants to stop, but that's uh, simply the basis of packaging. Don't I've got a meme. Look at we got a meme oh, you for do? today. Ooh. I've got a meme. Did you send it? I did send it. And people in, like, in, I guess, uh, what, uh, marketing, creative ventures will definitely understand this. When yes. I'm going to explain it. Yeah. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Is it really a meme, though, if you have to explain it? It's a, well, it's a meme. <laughs> 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 we are going to... Oh, oh yeah, uh, he sent it on email. Uh, See, look, Michelin I emailed guide. it to your email. You got the Michelin man. <laughs> Aaron's like, why'd you email it to me? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I could have texted it to you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <coughs> you get the Michelin man. <laughs> yeah, that's so f- that's so odd to me. Crazy. But I guess I don't I don't think of Michelin that. being a uh, being a uh, French company. But I guess it is. Yeah, never would have thought about that. It seems so American. Their more their, people. Their, their icon what, the seems so American. The marshmallow, yeah. marshmallow, yeah. marshmallow man. The overweight guy. The overweight guy. <laughs> no, that's the dough boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <man. laughs> uh, that's funny. What are we talking about next week? Uh, we have uh, our attorney, lawyer, business. Special guest. We're talking about business contracts and how not to get yourself screwed what? over. <laughs> oh, he's got great. He's got great war stories. What legal, the legal stuff? Oh God. Oh. oh all please. right. This is the meme. Oh, when man. you incorporate all the feedback from every critique, <laughs> and if if they're, if I smoke some weed, that would look delicious. Yeah. If you are deal, <laughs> if you are dealing with a with a creative, and you are like, let's put all the stuff in this. Let's let's put all the information. This is what you come out with. You come out with this piece of media, this 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 whatever it is that you're trying to create with this creative, and this is what it, this website, and this is what it looks like. It's a monstrosity. Mm, <laughs> delicious. Now I know everything that you we, eat. We should it's use some salty monstrosity. and sweet in there. We should start using memes in our onboarding meetings with new clients <laughs> to avoid. Just put it in the pitch deck and be like, okay, you don't want this. I already know. <laughs> Two clients this refers to. Yeah, this that is, they um, would benefit from seeing. Yeah, this. Yes. stop yeah. doing this. <laughs> this stop is, making us do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is what happens when you just can't stop yourself from putting all the things in. You end up with this monstrosity that that doesn't actually accomplish the reason you need the thing. I think it's because they're almost afraid that they're not going to be able to sell the person looking at it. Like they're going to miss something. They're yeah. missing out on transaction in reality. Mm-hmm. No, you just sold them off of it. <laughs> less, yeah. less can absolutely be more. I mean, just look at the 100%. packaging right in front of us, right? Yeah, 100%. you know, you know, you know. Uh, so uh, Scott Kelby, I, th- I, I may have mentioned this before, uh, but Scott Kelby uh, said something one time that that revolutionized the way that I think about uh, photography and videography and and a lot of a lot of things about life. He said, "Find the thing that makes a thing a thing." Find find the the very, the very specific things that define something and and photograph just that because what's really interesting is he goes around the world he pho- photographs the Taj Mahal he's I mean you've seen his pictures they're in National Geographic but he doesn't just go to the Taj Mahal and like stand in line with all the other tourists and like just photograph the same photograph trying to like, capture the entire Taj Mahal exactly in one photo. he's not or trying the, to capture the, the, the entire the Leaning Tower of Pisa where everyone's gone yeah <laughs> yeah. He's not taking. He's finding. Uh, he's finding the textures. He's finding the the piece of it that you can't find and, and that defines the Taj Mahal so perfectly. And so his picture of the Taj Mahal is not even from the ground. It's up on top of the Taj Mahal, looking off to the left, where almost no one goes. And so that's what they published. Uh, and so uh, find the thing that makes a thing a thing, and, and photograph just that. That's what you should do in a lot of things creative. Because if you start just piling on turkey on pizza, this is what you get. <laughs> Nobody wants that. We've never dissected a meme like that, like this before. I well, like I feel it. very passionate about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, um, thank you for tuning in to the Think Fresh Move 4 podcast. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>